Hi, welcome to Dental Canvas. I am Dr. Gopal Kasat, and throughout this series, we will go through the anatomy of individual tooth that will help you to differentiate between them and train your eyes and brain to look for any anomalies. This knowledge of anatomy also helps in better restorative buildup, thus enhancing your clinical practice. The basic idea behind this series is to bridge the gap between theory and imagination. If you like to know more about the channel, check the right top corner. Now let's move ahead, but before jumping into the anatomy, let's start by discussing few basic terminologies associated with the individual tooth when we are trying to convey a specific part across the room. Let me ask you a question. How will you describe the part specified on the maxillary right central incisor to your fellow dentist? Hopefully, by the end of this video, you will be able to answer this question. Let us start by discussing the surfaces of the tooth. Now to make things easier, rule of the thumb is that surfaces are named according to their adjacent structures. Each tooth contain 5 surfaces in total. Incisor and canine surface which is towards the lip or labia in Latin is therefore called labial surface. Similarly, premolar and molar surfaces towards the cheek or buccae in Latin are called buccal surfaces. Labial and buccal surfaces are together known as facial surface. All surfaces towards the tongue or lingua in Latin are therefore called lingual surfaces. Biting edge of the anterior tooth that is incisor and canine are called incisal edge. Similarly, the surface which come in contact or occlusion or in more simpler words, the chewing surfaces of the posterior teeth are called occlusal surface. The surface of the tooth facing towards the adjoining tooth are collectively called proximal surface. They can be either mesial when they are towards the midline or distal when away from the midline. The area of the mesial and distal surface of the adjacent tooth that come in contact is called the contact area and is usually defined by crest or height of the curvature. Incisors and canines are together known as anterior teeth whereas premolars and molars are together known as posterior teeth. As the proximal side naming scheme depends upon the midline, it results in a peculiar state where mesial surface of both the maxillary central incisors and that of mandibular central incisors come in contact with each other. That completes all the five surfaces. Now the crown may be divided into thirds in three directions. For anterior teeth, Incisor cervically into incisal, middle and cervical one-thirds, mesiodistally into mesial, middle and distal one-thirds, labiolingually into labial, middle and lingual one-thirds. For posterior teeth, occluso cervically into occlusal, middle and cervical one-thirds, mesiodistally into mesial, middle and distal one-thirds, buccolingually into buccal, middle and lingual one-thirds. Root can also be divided into apical, middle and cervical one-thirds. Now let's move on to line angle and point angle which are used only as descriptive terms to indicate a location as tooth naturally doesn't have hard edges. A line angle is formed by the junction of two surfaces and derive its name from the combination of the two surfaces that join. The line angles of the anterior teeth are 6 in number and those are mesiolabial, mesiolingual, distolingual, distolabial, labioincisal and lingioincisal. 
the line angles of the posterior teeth are eight in number and those are mesiobuccal mesiolingual distolingual distobuccal disto occlusal buccal occlusal mesio occlusal and linguo occlusal similarly a point angle is formed by the junction of three surfaces and derive its name from the combination of the names of the surfaces forming it the point angle of the anterior teeth are four in number and those are mesio labio incisal mesio linguo incisal distal linguo incisal and distal labio incisal the point angles of the posterior teeth are four as well and those are mesio bucco occlusal mesio linguo occlusal distal linguo occlusal and disto bucco occlusal now let's get back to the question so the pointed area is near the labio distal line angle in the middle third of the labial surface or is on the middle part of the labial surface in the distal one third of the maxillary right central incisor that completes our basic terminologies which will help us to get started with the anatomy of individual tooth to summarize it all you can see a picture on the screen and to download the same check the description if you have learned something hit the like button and feel free to subscribe thanks for watching i am dr gopal and you have been watching dental canvas see you all in the next one